Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Books and Tarot. I'm Nishagni Prakash and this is Nishagni Tarot, where you receive inspired insights to create an empowered life. If you're interested in getting a tarot reading done from me, visit my website. The link is in the bio. So for today's Books and Tarot episode, I have decided to review The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. So The Phantom of the Opera is a book that has been on the list of the must-read classics in global literature. You may have heard of it, you may have even seen adaptations in the form of musicals, movies, plays and so on. So this book for me has been a mixed bag. So one thing that I really loved about Gaston Leroux's writing is that it's very atmospheric. If you want to read a book that describes architecture very beautifully, very soulfully, uh, then this is a book that you definitely must pick. So The Phantom of the Opera is based in uh, the uh, Palais Garnier, which is the Paris Opera House. So it's still in existence today and uh, it's one of the most iconic architectures in uh, France. So this book was written in 1909 and 1910 as a form of publication. So the book focuses on the story of a singer, an opera singer by the name Christine Dai and her adventures in the opera house, specifically her haunting by the phantom of the opera house. So this book was actually inspired by a rumor that was spreading in pa Paris around 1907-1908 timeline that there was a phantom who was residing in the bubbles of the opera house. So people would hear these eerie sounds, um, they would see shadows lurking around in the corners, they had all these ghostly occurrences that would take place and everyone was convinced that there was a, a phantom who was living in the basement of the opera house and they believed that, the, the, that this phantom had abducted an important uh, person or an artist from the opera house. So this rumor was circulating around Paris and that is the basis of the book which Gaston Leroux used to write The Phantom of the Opera. So we see characters like Christine Dye, uh, Raoul de Chagny, we see the Persian, we see the various dancers who were part of the opera and we also see the different managers, the stagehands and so on. So what I, like I mentioned, the, uh, this book is extremely atmospheric and its description of the building itself of the Paris Opera House is beautiful. Uh, as I was reading this book, I felt like I was in the Paris Opera House in the 1900s when it was just built and I, I could picture myself, you know, looking at the tapestries, um, the hallways, the lush gardens. Uh, he, Leroux just brought the whole place to life for me. But that's exactly where the genius of this book ends. Um, in terms of characterization, I felt the characterization of the people populating this book was extremely weak. The conversations were weak. There wasn't any stuff or soul in the conversations or the characterization. It seemed that Leroux was so focused on building the mystique in the, you know, the, the Paris Opera House uh, in terms of creating that um, ghostly gothic atmosphere that he didn't focus too much on the characters themselves or their backgrounds or their um, interactions with each other. So that was kind of a bummer because this book definitely did have the um, potential to be one of the best books to be you know, ever written, but uh, unfortunately because of this one issue, it kind of fell short. So yeah, so I, I think this, this book definitely, I mean, you can pick it up. I mean, if you love reading classics, then this is definitely something you should read because it is a gem in French literature. Um, although I have heard theories that the, or that the information or the write-up in the original French uh, has been sort of misrepresented in the English translations. I mean, there are theories uh, that do say this, but I, since I don't know French, I can't really vouch for that. All right. So yeah. So in terms of Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux, it's a mixed bag. I would give it a three to three point five. Um, you can definitely pick it up. It was a very easy read. The the language is very uh, you know uh, easy to read. Uh, I finished it in about three days. So yeah, it's a very small book. So as you can see, it's a very small book. So definitely you can read it. All right. So in terms of the tarot card that I would pick for this book, The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux, it has to be the Nine of Blades. So the Nine of Blades or the Nine of Swords is a card about which which basically talks of uh, you know, a, a situation where you are completely stressed, you are completely fearful for your future, for your safety, um, for your well-being. But a lot of times, th there is no clarity whether this 
threat is real or it's false so until you actually face the situation you won't find out whether all these uh, you know issues the all these fears and stress that you're actually facing is correct or is, is real or not whether it is it has some truth to it or not and uh, i won't explain why i feel this card actually matches this book because then i would be giving away spoilers so definitely pick this book up and you will know why i chose the nine of blades or the nine of swords for this book so yeah I think that brings me to the end of, to of today's books and tarot and I'll see you next week for another episode. And just on a fun note, it's really funny that I'm filming this in broad daylight when basically the entire book takes place in the bubbles of the Paris Opera House which is extremely dark and dank. <laughs> Alright guys, see you later, bye!